Weird Woman is intended for adult audiences and discusses mental health, history, and other tough topics. Take care when listening. Night's almost here. It's night eight. And it's almost, uh, tomorrow is the first day of fall, the equinox. I've been waiting all day, waiting for the sun to go down or at least the gray clouds to turn black. Because they always came at night, the women. Nighttime was their time. First with dreams, then without. I'm waiting and I'm hoping that they come. And her, the the new one. She was there for just a moment last night, and then she disappeared. But that was okay. She was there, and I saw her. So I know she'll be back, and the others too. I'm not alone. I'm not alone. So I'll wait. Night will be here soon, and one of them will be here too. During the day today, I realized how truly scared and freaked out I was yesterday. I was keeping it at bay, a little anyway, but I was was getting to that place of seeing no way out. I've been there so many times before where I hurt so much, and the world is so scary, and there's no clear path forward. I'd been able to keep that at bay a while, lost in the adrenaline of moving out here and of taking action. But when the women disappeared, I'm here. I got past it for now. And that's all that matters right now. Major is at the window and the door again. He's more and more frantic the last couple days. Like he knows something or his longing is just too much. She looked old. Not, not her, not her body, not herself. I mean, from a very old time, far older than even the old one from the 1500s. She spoke, oh, I think it's called Old Norse now. She smelled like the sea, and her body was strong and tough. And her hands, they still had a bit of blood from, uh, I think, an animal sacrifice. She had markings, like old forms of tattoos. There was something like fantastical about her very lord of the rings vibe but also something very real like grounded in the earth and the woods and yeah the stars are so bright out here less light pollution maybe that maybe that lends itself to that idea A time before lights. Before we stopped looking up. Ooh. (laughs) I I feel it. (laughs) Yeah, I feel it. Someone is coming. Someone is coming. So many of you. So many maids and crones facing destruction as unto me. 
I knew not what I would do when I made a sacrifice. I knew not how many, how much I would see. I knew not how truly connected we are. <laughs> you, you're... Wow. You're from Viking times. I see it. I know it. You were... Taken from home and the Norse lands to what's now England, I think. Our men, our raiders, kept returning with new stories, new gods. They must convert to the Christ religion to visit the trading posts. So they did. Some in name, some in meaning. I saw the destruction that was to come. I saw the way this law of Christ would crush our ways. And when I voyaged to Engelland with the war chief who claimed me, I found the crushing underway. I see it. I see it the way you saw it. The ruined farms and the, the burned out keeps. The desolation. The path of the raiders and the pride of the Anglo-Saxons and the fierceness of the Welsh and the monks circling trying to curry favor to convert all of you and the man the chieftain it looks like he was kind in his own way but still rough used to war to taking who and what he wanted I was not sad but I felt a fog, like I was dying, like we all were. Our gods, Freya and Frey and Odin, and all our land spirits, and our ways, our lives. And I will admit to haste, to the lick of fire within. I thought of nothing else but our Norn, the sisters who control the thread of our lives and of the heathens here in this land, with similar ways, hiding in their holes, in their woods, whispering of the strange powers of this earth beneath us, their own spirits and gods. I yearned to understand, to look beyond, into the long stretch of weird, to see how we may survive. I made a sacrifice to the gods, to see. But I saw only more destruction. I saw all of you. I saw all of your worlds ending. Oh. You were the start of this. You started this. You were the... You're the original one. I struggled to understand what I see what all of you see, but it is, and that's all that can be said. Weird. You mentioned that, you said that word, but I know in my mind it's spelled different. It's spelled W-Y-R-D. I've heard that before, but what? That is one reason I cannot understand. You do not see weird. You do not think as we do. I hear your head trying to find the word of your time. Fate. Destiny. Yes, but these are incomplete. We are all now. We are all now. We are all on a path. We all act, and our actions affect others. Those before us and those after us, all affected by action. Our life thread is tied to others. We are all connected. We are all 
connected. Okay, yeah, but wait, it, it kind of sounds like you're talking about predestination, but also free will. You think in the Christ way, the way that leads you all to fire. Weird is not an end. It is happening now. We each have a path, but we can twist and turn on that path. Our path is not moral. Our path is not punishment or reward. Our path is not the whim of a jealous god or a crushing power. It just is. There really is no changing anything. Is there? There's really no changing anything. There's no... There's no point. Fucking hell, I was looking to you, to all of you, for hope, for a reason to keep going. Because it, what's the point? What's the meaning of anything? Why do we keep living in the face of destruction? Why keep living at all? No, you do not understand. I looked at the path. I saw the Norn's threads. I see weird it is a cruel fate that we all move towards. But we must not simply let it happen. We must have the courage to face our fate, even fight it. There is no honor in passivity, no honor in giving in. The point, as you say, is to try to make a life of action, and to know our actions are all connected. We are connected. I, I don't know if I understand. And I, I keep thinking of, you know, you say weird, and I know it's spelled W-Y-R-D, but I think of weird, a modern word maybe. W-E-I-R-D. There were the Weird Sisters in Macbeth, a trio of witches. Maybe they were based on your Norn. And they predicted something, and with that prediction, Macbeth made awful choices and made it happen. So then I think weird meant, I guess, Supernatural, uncanny, or strange. And now I guess it means different, but disturbingly different, because it's a label, a, a word used to target. All words become weapons. You were looking for hope, too, when you found a way to look through time. But then you saw all of us. You saw me. All of us at the end of something. The ends of our worlds. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We, we couldn't give you hope. I'm sorry. Not in the way I expected, perhaps. But I found all of you connected by powers that defy the gods of your times. I found the connections. I found the truth of weird. What path may come for me is what will come. I will face it. I will fight it. And I know that what I will do will echo and push you to action. It will connect us and those after us. Our world, my world, 
It feels like it's closing in. The leaders are destroying us and they're coming for people like me. They're coming for us. In the name of Christ and capital and sort of communal masculinity, they're trying to be more like the men of your time, taking what they want and destroying everything along the way. Yes, our ways can be cruel. I am not a whole being in this world, just a vessel for men to control. But I fight against that. I refuse to be cowed by it. Look, I'm scared. I don't know how to fight. I don't know how to fight, not really. I can write and I can read and think, but none of that protects me. None of that will protect me. I thought running might protect me. I don't think it will. My, my thread, my weird, it's going to destroy me because I'm the type of woman this world wants to destroy. You do. You do fight. You have cried out in anger and defiance, and you have found me and all of the others. You fight, and you have been granted vision. You have seen that life is the fight, that life is the same story told again and again. The world's end is always happening and always will. You fight and you create a life that affects others, that encourages others to fight. But come on, <laughs> there's so few of us, it's not enough. We are but one circle. We have found those who we need to find. There are other circles, others who connect through the threads and find the strength to carry on. What now? Tomorrow comes, the end comes. How will you face it? Yeah. Woman is an audio drama from Broads and Books Productions. The show is written, performed, and produced by Amy Lee Lillard. Music comes from the Ghosts albums by Nine Inch Nails, courtesy of a Creative Commons license. Find full episode notes, transcripts, and show details at weirdwomanpodcast.com. If you like what you hear, tell a weird friend. Thanks for listening. Fuzzy Memories Podcast, we celebrate the good, 
the rad, and the fugly of the 80s and 90s. We're three latchkey kids who made it out alive. And in each episode, we break down all the culture that popped one year at a time. Whether it's the birth of legends. I'm Lyme disease free today, and I have Whitney Houston and MTV to thank. (laughs) Or audacious moves. Imagine also the the poor Golden Gate Bridge. You turn 75 and people have a party on you. I don't want that. (laughs) Or even confusing PSAs. In the stop, drop, and roll. I mean, we would, I assume as an adult, I would catch on fire weekly. All the time! (laughs) We've got a take that will make you laugh. We've also got thoughts on all sorts of random phenomena and the most unmitigated of gall. Why sharks can't be trusted, people can't be trusted, and rivers can't be trusted. (laughs) It's collusion. It's of the (laughs) highest degree. Uh Uh-huh. You were counseling me to start my remarks with, first of all, bitch. <laughs> that would, everyone in that room would have snapped to attention. It's going to be basically coffee lid, shark revenge, and then maybe like Matt gets. <laughs> we need to do something about him. Join us every other Wednesday to celebrate the hits, the misses, and the misfits of the weirdest decades. If I could tell my 14-year-old self from 1990 that I would be eating in a Cheesecake Factory in, in Beverly, Beverly Hills. Hills, I'd be like, we did it. We, we did it, Joe. We did it. <laughs> Listen and subscribe to Fuzzy Memories on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and your favorite podcast platform. Bye.